Okay, so in this second lesson for topic 5.3, we're going to look at these uh, aims for the lesson. Um, the internal resistance of a cell, the concept of internal resistance, the electromotive force, a very important concept, EMF, which is this side with this symbol there. Uh, the use of this formula, which we're going to derive from a graph, and, and then a circuit to find the internal resistance. So it's, it's a very short and easy unit, just some definitions to look at. And some, some things that we mentioned last class. Last class, if you remember, you had to watch these videos about solutions to storage of energy in batteries. And we looked at lithium-ion cells and we thought, okay, this could probably be the solution to all our problems. But as well as problems come with solutions, solutions sometimes bring problems. So we need to become aware of some of the consequences of lithium battery cells. They use cadmium, I mean cobalt, cobalt. They use cobalt, cobalt. And cobalt is uh, extracted in mines uh, in Congo mainly uh, and there is an estimated here this is an article from the Washington Post a hundred thousand miners many of them are children so I want you to read this article afterwards. I want you to read this article in the Washington Post, the complete article of how we are extracting the cobalt that we use in the lithium ion batteries and how is that a problem also. This is to do, well, this has to do with the nature of science, you know? So for this reason, I think Apple has forbidden to use the um, lithium ion batteries that use cobalt. So this is something to research. But just to mention some problems of lithium ion batteries. Okay, so what is electromotive force? The electromotive force, or EMF, as it is written here, is the total energy difference per unit charge around the circuit. So, definition of electromotive force in volts is the change of energy per unit charge in Coulomb. That's a good definition, right? Another way of understanding what it is, it is the potential difference across the terminal of a cell when there is no current in the cell, when there is no current in the cell, when no current is flowing. No current flows, then the potential difference is maximum, and to that we call electromotive force. And what is internal resistance? Okay, we said that the batteries have a characteristic curve, that means that the voltage drops. We saw that in the graph that we've seen last class <coughs> of the potential difference in time how they drop, depending on the current, they have different characteristics, right? But they drop. The potential difference inevitably drop. Why, do, why is that? Because there is uh, an internal resistance inside the battery that we could, ignore, we could not ignore. Um, and the power dissipated by the internal resistance is calculated by this equation, right? Where R is the internal resistance of the battery. So as we use the battery, the internal resistance of the battery increases. So that means that it requires uh, more potential difference to keep the same current. And that, of course, uh, brings down the potential difference of the battery. So we do an experiment in class. If we come back to class, we'll do this experiment. Basically, this is the circuit. What we do here is we have a variable resistor that is varying the current through a, a circuit, a very simple circuit, and we're measuring the potential difference across the battery, and we're measuring the current. And we will notice 
that starting from this point here, as we increase the, um, the current, that means as we decrease the load, as we decrease the resistance, the current increases, we might have a curve that should be approximated to a straight line that is showing me how the potential different drops. So this would be the result of, of this simple experiment that we do in class. So any simple battery, a AA battery, any battery that is being used, we just increase the current from 20 to 80 milliamps and we see how the voltage across the battery drops. So we are expecting something like this, a line like this. So as we discover the, the resistance uh, is decreased, the ammeter reading increases as we expect, but we might find that the reading, the reading of the voltmeter decreases slightly. That means that the internal resistance of the battery is uh, increasing. So this is what we do in the experiment. We, we gather the data with the error bars, we mark the line of best fit, and then we use the maximum and minimum gradient, any method that you want. It could be with the template that I shared with you, or it could be with Logger Pro with manual fit. And then, what does the negative slope mean? So, if we look at this graph, the negative slope is, I'm gonna change the color, the negative slope is the change of voltage over change in current, right? So the negative slope means M, the gradient, is a concept of resistance. The internal resistance of the battery is that slope. So this point here is the potential difference of the battery when the current is zero. We call that the electromotive force of the battery, the EMF of the battery. And the slope is the internal resistance of the battery, right? Um, what is the meaning of the y-intercept? I just mentioned that it is the, the electromotive force. And then derive an equation. Okay, I think it's quite obvious, right? Derive an equation. So if we are already used to this equation uh, of a straight line with y in terms of x being expressed by this equation where b is the independent term and m is the gradient, in this case negative, we could transform that into voltage against current. So y is potential difference, the gradient, as we said, is the resistance multiplied by the independent variable, which is y, and the independent term is the electromotive force. So I don't know if this counts as a derivation, but this is an explanation of this equation that it's in the data booklet, right? The voltage across the terminals of the battery is the electromotive force minus the current multiplied by the internal resistance of the battery. Some examples. <clears throat> examples to apply all the concepts that we have learned. Um, 200 microcoulombs of charge is brought from an electric potential of 2 volts to an electric potential of 14 volts. So we are taking a charge from low to high potential. That means that we have to work to do that. It's like bringing a mass from low to high gravitational potential. The work needs to be done on the charge, right? Uh, what is the change in potential energy of the charge? Okay, so here we have to remember Joule's law. The change in potential energy is the charge in coulombs multiplied by the change in potential difference in volts. So in this case, we have 200 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs multiplied by 14 minus 2, 12 times nothing, 10 to the 0, joules, uh, volts. And the result is going to be in joules, the result of that in joules. So we're using Joule's law to find out the energy that 12 
to what is this? Uh, two four zero zero times ten to the minus six. I am going to put two four times ten to the minus four joules. Right? A very small amount of energy. Okay. Another example. Suppose that we have a tester, we are measuring the electromotive force of the battery, 1.6 volts. How much chemical energy is converted to electrical energy by the cell? If a charge of 15 microcoulombs is drawn by the volt meter. Hmm? The multimeter here is used as a voltmeter. Okay, so this is the potential difference how much chemical energy is converted into electric energy. This is what is happening in the battery. It's transforming electrical energy, sorry, chemical energy into electrical energy, right? So the amount of energy that is, again, same law. I'm not gonna do this equation, but same law. Another example, one more practice. A battery has an internal resistance of 1.5 ohm, uh, the power, it dissipates. It gives us the current, two amps. So it, it, uh, what is the rate of heat production it is supplying to us? So this is the power. The rate of heat production is the power. So we saw several for, uh, formulas for power, but the one that we apply for internal resistance is I squared times R, right? So in this case, it's 2.00 amps squared times 1.25. So this is 4 multiplied by 1.25, and the unit is going to be watts. Simple, simple equation, simple problems. OK, so this is lesson two. And these are the assignments that you have to do at home at your own pace. First assignment, watch David Kahn's videos. The link is in the slides that I shared with you. This is for 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3, how to solve problems from, from the IB. Then I added some quizzes in Carboodle, so log into Carboodle and solve the quizzes. Next, OLP quizzes. You go to assignments and you'll find 5.3 quizzes in the, o, in the OLP, and just two pages, very, very little homework to do here just two pages to complete on the workbook about 5.3. So these are your homework um, and we get together with questions that you might come from these four tasks that you have to apply yourself to. Have a good day.